Welcome to my channel. This is Hot Mess and Hot Woo. My name is Lynn. Let's have some fun. So today I thought it would be really fun to do some kind of modern boho DIY home decor. So I've got a few projects. First one here is going to be this adorable hexagon. Um, I want to say it's a shelf because that was really kind of my initial vision for this was to have something hanging on the wall that was just a little bit more unique. However, once I was finished, I realized it was kind of multi-purposed. So I just took two of these hexagon mirrors from the Dollar Tree and I removed the mirror portion from the frame. Once those were removed, I realized what I could use was these tumbling tower blocks that I also get from the Dollar Tree. And I was able to just hot glue them to the interior, like the perimeter portion of it. You can see a good close up here. And it gave it some nice height. So once I got all of those attached to the surrounding border on the inside of it, I then attached the second hexagon mirror frame and that's where we start to see the shelf portion start to take shape. What I like most about this is that it is different. Um, I really liked the white, just that crisp white, and then leaving the wood blocks, the natural wood color, I thought was very summer, very refreshing, and kind of would lighten up the wall decor. I am going to use this as a shelf. Um, I guess it's not a shelf. Maybe it's just like a display piece. I'm not really sure what you want to consider it. So I do, I will be hanging it on the wall. However, I would not recommend putting anything really heavy on it. I mean, it's really just, it's some cheap plastic and some hot glue holding this thing together. So definitely don't put like a coveted family heirloom or something on display on this. But I think for some basic little fun tchotchkes that are lightweight, I think these this will make a really good display. I am using Gorilla Glue hot glue, which I just love it. I think it gives such a strong hold, but again, I would still keep any decor piece that you decide to place on this on the lighter side. I left some of that writing on the tumbling tower blocks. I didn't pay attention to that detail. So I'm just taking a little emery board that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just lightening it up and kind of sanding it down. However, when I go to hang it, that's going to be the part that is on top, and so you actually won't even be able to see it. And here it is, all finished, and I have the little um, pot that I made in a previous video. Next, we're going to use two more of these hexagon mirrors, and instead of making it a shelf, I thought it might be fun to do kind of a natural, again, boho themed, a lantern or possibly even a tray but I was kind of going for the lantern vibe with this one so again you remove all of the paper backing and you want to remove the mirror itself and all the screws that are holding it together as I'm showing you here next I'm taking some dowels they're the shorter ones that Dollar Tree has and I'm just putting kind of a fair glob of hot glue onto the bottom and at each of the points of the hexagon I'm going to put two dowels and one on either side of where that screw would be you could see what I'm doing right there and I do that all the way around to each point and then I go back through and just for some added stability and visual decor I'm adding one additional dowel to the middle of each one of those sections also
you can tell from the initial picture that I showed, I ended up going with ribbon that to kind of weave in and out of these dowels. I did, however, I really battled, and I think I'm gonna go in and make another one because I really think raffia would look really, really cute. So once I was all done, I thought, oh, should I make another one now? But nope, I'm just gonna have to go back and attack that on another day. And all I'm doing is basket weaving this yarn. It's not yarn, it's ribbon. I'm basket weaving the ribbon through these dowels. I used a total of two and a half uh, rolls of ribbon. This ribbon I did find at the Dollar Tree, so it was still quite cost effective, even though I used quite a bit of ribbon. I did put dabs of hot glue on every spot where the ribbon meet the dowel just to kind of keep it. This is so cute. I really like this one. Next, I decided to try my hand at a mandala. I found this really nice new, it's for this season, it's just like a, a round plaque. I went ahead and removed the sticker front portion of it, but then while I was at the Dollar Tree, I found this really neat mandala coloring book and I just kind of was flipping through the pages and was just kind of taking a look at the different styles to see which one I liked best. And this is the one that I chose. What I decided to do was just cut the shape completely out. All the little areas here, I'm just kind of cutting them off and I'm separating them out. I still didn't have an exact design in mind when I was doing this part, but I knew I wanted to at least use as much of the design as possible. Once I have those cut out, I'm just using my little Dollar Tree scraper and I'm gonna remove the sticky adhesive. There was still a little bit of stickiness to it when I was done removing the sticker, so I just took my little finger sander and just kind of smoothed over the edge. Now, I liked the color of the board, but I didn't wanna leave it just the board. So I'm using Fawn by Waverly, and you'll see here the color is almost identical. It keeps it very natural, very neutral, and I really enjoyed this color. I haven't used it much in some of my um, home decor. This is actually a newer color for me. I got it on discount, so I ended up buying, I think, I want to say like three or four of them. So I'm glad I got so many because I definitely enjoyed this natural look that the paint gave this piece. Sorry about that. I don't know why my camera was having a hard time focusing. Now for the next part, just to give some alternatives, I, Dollar Tree does have these book rings, and if you take some of their yarn or their twine, this is their um, twine, I guess you would call it. Um, if you were to take that and wrap it around the little binder, I don't know, binder rings, you would get a more natural look. I, out of curiosity, had purchased this big packet of natural wood rings from Amazon, and so I decided to give those a try. I hadn't used them yet. Once I had the image that I wanted, I knew I wanted the largest portion to be right in the middle, so I'm just using this graphite uh, transfer paper that I also got on Amazon. And I always forget, but the trick is to put the shiny side down. And if you can't remember, all I do is just like, I put it on my work surface and I just make like a mark with my fingernail to see what will transfer. So once you have that in place and you have your design where you want it, I prefer to use a, um, a mechanical pencil because it does leave a little bit of that, the lead behind so I can kind of see which areas I've already gone over and maybe which areas I've missed. Once I had the middle one done, I knew I wanted to just kind of surround it just a little bit more. Once I had that done, I went through with a very fine tip white paint marker. I get these at Walmart and they have a fine tip and an extra fine. And this is the extra fine. The <laughs> paper wrapping that it comes with to show the brand and all that just kind of ripped off when I opened the paint marker. But 
It was only a couple bucks from Walmart. But this one's my favorite one. I really, really like these paint markers. So what I'm doing, as you can see, I'm just going over where I had traced over my design. And at times, in some spots, you can still see some of the, the lead from the pencil that shines through. Once the white paint is completely dry, I just go in with an eraser and I just erase the, um, the marks from the transfer paper and it comes off really well. Decided to add just a couple dots for detail and then I went ahead and attacked the middle. As you can see, I then went back in and I added two more of the half round mandalas to kind of frame that large one in the middle. Going back to the natural wood round, I wanted to make this, I guess, macrame-ish. I have to really take some time and watch some YouTube videos on some talented girls who can do some really good macrame. I chose to take the easy way out. I'm doing a very simple braid. It's not going to be very, it's not a long hanger, so I wasn't too worried about it being a little bit more on the plain or non-intricate side. I didn't want the hanger to be the focal point of this project by any means, so I really wasn't concerned with how detailed it was. So I just went back to use that yarn that I was showing you earlier. Once I got the braid done, I then just took the ends of the yarn because I still didn't know exactly how long I wanted it. Using the painter's tape, I kind of just tried to bundle it up and create kind of a point so that I could thread it through the existing hole where the previous hanger was. And this was a little bit more, it wasn't difficult, it was just interesting. I first tried my little Cricut tool, but then I found that these little itty bitty like detail scissors that I got from the Dollar Tree, they actually worked really good. And so it just punched the yarn straight through. I keep calling it yarn, but it's twine. Just kind of tack that down with a little bit of hot glue so that it'll stay where I want it. And then off camera, I do take um, craft paper and I cover the back portion just in case it's ever seen on the other side. It gives it a more polished and finished look. And here's a look at it now that it's done. If you guys are new here, I want to say thank you for stopping by and clicking on my video. If you are returning, welcome back and thank you for sticking around. My name is Lynn. This is Hot Mess and Hot Glue. I love all things DIY. My preferred style is a more modern boho with a splash of rustic farmhouse. I really love doing thrift flips. As long as it's on a budget, I'm good. If that's something you think you might want to stick around for, I'd love it if you consider becoming part of the fam and hitting that subscribe button along with checking that bell so that you're notified anytime I upload a new interesting video so you always know what I'm up to next. When I was at the Dollar Tree, I saw this little windmill and it just, so many things ran through my mind and I just really wanted to utilize the shape of the, the flower to just give it more of a neutral and boho vibe. I found this, I don't know if it was a scarf, I really don't know exactly what it was, but I got this material at a thrift store and it was, it was 50 cents and I got it 50% off that day. So I keep looking at it and I really, really wanted to do something with it. And so I tried really hard to make this project work with this material. However, as you can see, I'm struggling hard with this wire. Once I took it out and I undid the like the green material that was on it before, that material is what was keeping its shape. So once I took that off, I took away all of its support. And I was having just a heck of a time trying to recreate that. I was ending up with way too much hot glue. It wasn't giving me the clean look that I was going for and I tried, I really tried, but I'll tell you what, at this point here, this project was no longer fun. And so I just said, you know what? Nope, sorry, but we'll save the fabric and we'll use it for something else. Luckily, I bought two because 
I didn't know exactly what I was gonna do with it. So I went ahead, I scrapped that one, and on this one here, as you can see, I'm just doing a full coat of white paint on both the front and the back. I still hadn't quite decided if I was gonna use that fabric or not, but I knew that if I did, I would have to cover the coloring because that would show through on that fabric. Once that was on, I was just kind of poking around in my stash and I felt, saw these really fun different um, unfinished wood pieces. There was like almost, these ones are almost like toothpick size. I, I don't even know where I got them or how long I've had them. Um, those ones were really small and so I just glued them in like sets of three to make it a little bit easier to work with. I pulled out some popsicle sticks, I pulled out some tiny dowels, and I pulled out some like flat, uh, they're almost like coffee stir sticks. I'll show you them here. So I got these little tiny wood dowels and the skinny sticks both at Walmart and they were at most two bucks a pack, but it was probably, I think the little dowels were like a dollar twenty-five or something. They were really inexpensive and I still had quite a few left over. To make it easier to get the shape that I'm looking for, I just kind of put everything together and I did this same process for all three of the different materials that I ended up using. I used the Gorilla Glue wood glue just to keep everything together and while it was drying, I kept the blue painter's tape on. Once I did the natural wood look, I just, I didn't like the white background. So once I was done kind of tracing everything out, I decided, look, it's not covering everything. Um, oh, and a very important part, I was just sanding that. It's very important to take the time because when you cut those wood pieces, they're really jagged. So to keep it nice and clean, I definitely, definitely do not skip out on sanding those edges. Back to painting this black, I decided that the natural wood would pop better if I used a black background, and I was really pleased with the outcome of changing it from white to black. So now that all my little petals are cut, they're dried, I'm just going to attach them, and I did same materials um, across from each other. So those are the little dowels, and across that one we will go the other one with the dowels, then there's the flat stir stick one, and then there's the tiny toothpick one. And so the matching materials are just across from each other. I wanted to separate that, the black and the wood, and so I decided to use those, you know, wood little rounds again. Once they were on, it was just, it was too neutral. So I added a black ring, I added a white ring, and then I decided it was still a little too neutral. I went ahead and mixed up Folk Arts Deep Burgundy and Apple Barrel White Paint and I did kind of a 50-50 ratio and it came, it just made this really nice muted, almost mauve color and I was really digging it. So I decided I was going to use that for the middle. This is how this one turned out. I still don't know if I want to hang this or use it. I, I, this one I'm a little concerned with. <laughs> this last project here, it's just, it's a thrift store find. It's like a vase or maybe a candle holder or something, but it was a buck 99 and again, I got this at 50% off. So a dollar, I figured even if I mess it up, I'm okay with that. It's worth giving it a shot for a dollar. Now underneath the black paint, it like was originally at one point, this really pretty terracotta color. So I decided that that was what I, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to kind of bring it back to this really more natural terracotta color, but because this black paint is so dark, I went through and I did one base coat of white Waverly chalk paint all over the entire base. And I was really careful to get inside all the grooves and I painted not just the outside of the base, but I went in and painted the inside. Using this terracotta color that I got off Amazon, it's a satin finish, I give the entire thing a really good coat, make sure I'm covering all of the white because I, I want some of the white to be on the finished product, but I want to be in control of that. So I'm not getting the terracotta paint so much into the little crevices here as I am just getting a top coat and painting on the inside as well. Once that was completely covered and dry, like I said, I did want some some like uh, whitewashing effect to this terracotta because this paint is satin and I don't necessarily love that finish. So if I take my chippy brush and I dry brush 
uh, some of the white chalk paint onto it, it gives it, it takes away that shine, brings it back to a more natural matted color finish. And to me, it kind of gives it that like dusty uh, pottery look. However, I did went, I did went, I went a little more heavy handed on it this time, but I really like the way it turned out. Using a, like a, a detailed sponge brush, I'm just going through and I'm kind of touching up areas that I want just a little bit more white to have those details just kind of pop a little bit so that you can really see them. And here it is all finished. So this one I thought would be fun to style in a couple different ways. I'm actually ultimately just gonna keep it here in my studio because I think it's great for my new paintbrushes. But here's a couple different greenery options for you. I do wanna say thank you for joining me today. These were very fun to make and I hope you feel inspired and get creative. But as always, please make sure you just have fun with it. If you've made it to the very end of this video, thank you for sticking around and I'd love it if you drop in a, a zombie emoji this time because I'm quite the zombie this week. Husband's away for work. It's been a week guys. So drop that zombie and while you're doing that please let me know which one was your favorite project. I love hearing everyone's different opinions and ideas. It just it's so much fun to chit chat with you guys. Again, thank you so much for stopping by. If you like my video, please give it a big thumbs up. That really helps my channel grow here on YouTube. And if you liked it a lot, please hit that subscribe button so that you can keep seeing anything else I've gotten myself into, guys.